Thursday, February the 7th, and we're at East Bay Speedway in Florida. Hi, everybody. I'm Jerry Klum with the Racing Review video. Yes, I said it's Thursday the 7th. Last night's show, the opener, Wednesday the 6th, was rained out, a torrential Florida downpour. Not unusual for this time of year in Florida. So the first show has been moved up to the second day. There'll be an entire program, though. They're going to be running on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and now Sunday night instead of Friday as the original plans called for. And here we are at East Bay Speedway, Gibsonton, Florida, just outside Tampa, near the bay. And this is the ninth running, the ninth annual East Bay Winter Sprint Car Nationals. I think you're going to see some great racing tonight. We've got a field of 58 sprint cars. Some of the biggest names in the nation are here at East Bay. Now, there's a competitive race being run on the other side of the state. A lot of people thought because that racetrack was putting up bigger money that East Bay would be short on cars. Well, that's not the case. The drivers came out and supported the All-Star Circuit of Champions, and there's a good stand uh, in the, the crowds coming into the stands right now. It's going to be a great night of racing if the weather holds up. The weatherman says it's fair now, but there's a good chance it might rain later on this evening and rain out this opening race. Let's go down through the pits now, talk to some of the drivers, and there's a couple of young ones here we're going to try to see, and then we're going to cover the sprint car, qualifying, the heat races, and the racing event. For the Race Review video, I'm Jerry Klum saying let's go racing. East Bay Raceway, 1985. This is the ninth annual running of the East Bay Winter Nationals for the Sprint Cars, and as we said before, it looks like it's going to be one of the best years yet. We've got 58 entries in the pits tonight, and some of the fastest cars anyone's ever seen. A lot of driver changes. Randy Smith from Iowa, now driving the Merrill Construction 5M car. Of course, Kelly Kinzer, he finished second in the 1984 All-Star Point standings. Kelly's still with the Butch and Jane Smith team out of uh, Kentucky, and looking tough for 1985. Randy Smith, driving the 56 Shields car is also on hand and we've got the sales road all the vendors from the racing parts come in and talk about a young driver there's Jeff Gordon from Vallejo California 13 years old we'll be talking to Jeff sometime this week and there's Sport Allen a 14 year old from Florida 13 and 14 year olds driving sprint cars doesn't seem possible but these boys are good and their futures look very bright. They're driving top equipment. This NASCAR, driven by Sport Allen, has already won him a feature this year in Florida. And Sport, who broke his arm roller skating a few weeks ago, doesn't think he's going to be real competitive today. My name is Roby Helm, and I'll be calling the fast and furious action for you tonight. We had, of course, the rain out on last night's show. And in case you're wondering, the show has been moved up one day, and the finals will be run on Sunday evening, beginning with time trials, or the first racing event, I believe, will be at 7 o'clock. Looking awfully fast out there. Greg and Kim Prevent working since early this morning, getting this track into shape after that heavy rain last night here at East Bay Raceway. So 51 automobiles in the pit area getting set to shoot at that track record held by Keith Kaufman at 13.759 set last year here at East Bay Raceway. Now it's time for qualifications. That was the voice of Roby Helm, the announcer here at East Bay Speedway. And the first car out is Randy Kinzer out of Bloomington, Indiana, driving the Jerry Shields number 56 car. Clocking a 14.593. Next up is 13-year-old Jeff Gordon from Vallejo, California. And Jeff is just starting in sprint cars. A go-kart champion, a driver of quarter midgets, his first time in a sprint car. He's looking very smooth, very sure of himself. He comes down for a clocking of 1611, and that's a little bit off the pace, but his official clocking on the second lap was 15.816. A little faster for Jeff Gordon. You watch this young driver. He gets better each day during the running of this year's Florida Nationals. And by the end of the week, we're really impressed with Jeff Gordon. Next up, Tony Wyant, the 38 car. Next up is another young driver, Sport Allen. Sport lives down in Florida. He's been running at East Bay now for a few months and has already picked up a feature win. Sport Allen driving a new Nance chassis, looking good here at East Bay Speedway as he picks up a clocking of 14.985 for Sport Allen. Next up, Dave Blaney, the defending 1984 Silver Crown titleist from the USAC Dirt Champ Car Division, former Rookie of the Year with the All-Stars. 
Dave out of Hartford, Ohio, driving for Dick Briscoe here in Florida. He picks up a clocky of 14.191, and that's second fast time for Dave Blaney, Hartford, Ohio, and the Dick Briscoe Sprinter. The first lap time. Kelly Kinzer, that 47 Butch and Janie Smith sprint car. And I'll... Next up is the third heat race. Kenny Donaldson from Michigan is driving the 7D car. He'll be starting on the inside. On the outside of the front row, it's Red Coonsback in the 66 car. Red's a local driver from Florida. Michigan and Florida sitting on the front row. A lot of states represented 15 different states. These drivers are coming from down here this year, the field of 51 cars. And fans come from all over the country. Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon is sitting in the back of this heat race lineup. He actually qualified farther up and was able to start in the second row, elected to go to the tail so he could gain some experience. The green flag, the race underway. It's Donaldson out in front. And Jack Hodenshield, who was sitting in the third row, slipped alongside Donaldson and moved into the lead. It's Jack Hodenshield out in front coming down for the first lap. Jack's from Millersburg, Ohio, but he's driving a car owned by a local owner, Jack Wetzel, down here in Florida. And Hodden Shield is one of the top competitors running with the All-Stars. You remember last year he drove the Bob Hampshire 63 car the latter part of the season. And that 21S car, that's Jerry Stone. Jerry Stone driving the Lloyd Stevens of Fixco number 21S. Out in front right now, though, it's Jack Hottenshield. He's standing on the gas and moving away from the second place car of Denny Donaldson. Frankie Kerr has moved in to fourth position in the K-54 car, and Jeff Gordon staying out of trouble. He's doing a good job back in the back of the pad, gaining some valuable experience. Kerr is now running side-by-side -side with Jerry Stone, the 21 car, as Jack Hottenshield is still out in front, setting the pace in this third heat race of the evening. It's Hottenshield, Denny Donaldson, Stone and Kerr battling for third position. There's the white flag. Hottenshield picks it up, one lap to go. Takes about 13.9 seconds to get around this track when you're staying on the gas. And here's Denny Donaldson in the uh, number seven car going by some lap traffic as the checkered flag falls on Hottenshield who won the race, followed by Denny Donaldson, Frankie Kerr, Jerry Stone was fourth, Red Coonspeck was fifth, and Robert Smith, another Florida driver, finished in sixth position. Jack Hottenshield, the winner. As the C-Main is now out on the track, ready to run a 10-lap race, they've shortened the race from 12 to 10 laps because of the weather, and the weather is getting worse. There is a fine mist raining all over the track right now. However, if the cars can keep moving, hopefully they can keep that track from getting too slippery. But there is a mist coming down right now on the racetrack. And sitting back in the back there in the 16 car, it's young Jeff Gordon. Jeff trying to get some experience. He's going to have a lot of opportunity this week with a top field of drivers to compete with in all kinds of different weather and track conditions. Out in front in the 72 car, it's uh, Roland Johnson who will be setting the pace for this C-Main. As the lineup is getting more complete now, the cars are going down the backstretch, ready for the green flag. The rain is getting heavier. Four of these cars move into the B main. It's Roland Johnson in the 72 car setting the pace. On the outside of the front row, driving the 86 car, it's George Streaker. There's the green flag. The race is on the way. Johnson's in the lead. Roland Johnson's your leader. George Streaker in the 86 car is running second. This track is getting greasy. These guys can't stand on the gas because they just break loose and spin tires. It's actually, I think, too wet to try to run, but the race is still under the green. Coming up in that yellow two car, that's the Johnny Vance two car, the Aristocat Sprinter out of Dayton, Ohio, and Tom Bigelow is the driver in that car today. It's George Streaker in the 86 car out in front, your leader, 
Roland Johnson in the 72 car is running second. Robbie Smith in the six car is in third position, and the 2V car just got by him. That's Bigelow. In the 11 car, Frank Riddle comes to a stop on the straightaway. That brought out a yellow flag. The track was cleared. Now the race is back underway. And it's George Stryker. Danny Milburn has moved into second position. Danny, another USAC driver. Bob Hopps moved up into third. And Tom Bigelow is running in fourth position. Two laps to go. Two laps to go for this C-Main. Remembering that we're going to qualify for these cars into the feature, the B feature event. They'll get their qualification times back. There's the white flag for Streaker. One more lap to go. He's qualified at tonight's B main event. We'll have another chance to make a move into the A. Down the back stretch. They're running very tight. The winner was George Streaker, followed by Danny Milburn in the 59 car. Bob Hopp held on for third, and Tom Bigelow for fourth. Those top four drivers are now qualified to move into the next race, a 15 lap B main. It's a 10 lap race. There's the green flag. It's Rick Unger in the 7C car out in front, standing on the gas. Billy Bowden in the second position, driving the 81 car. Rick Unger brings him down for the second lap. Billy Bowden running in second position, driving the 81 car. Hunger now living in Memphis, Tennessee. Billy Boat from Phoenix, Arizona. Daryl Dodd is running third. And in fourth position, it's Terry Shepard in the 7S car. <laughs> Jeff Gordon's in this race in the 16 car. We'll get a chance every now and then to show you, Jeff. He's not really trying to be competitive with early parts of the stages down here at East Bay. He's learning how to drive with these drivers and staying out of trouble, doing a great job of keeping everything under control. In the five car, that's Ronnie Smith. Still, the 7C car of Rick Unger. As Unger now is starting to move up on the uh, tail enders. He's making a move around the 10 car of Rick Standridge. There's the white flag for Rick Unger. Coming around now for the checkered flag and a victory. And this the fourth heat race of the evening. <laughs> Jeff Gordon driving a very nice, smooth, straight race, staying out of trouble. And uh, we're going to go on to finish the fourth heat race out in front, followed by Ronnie Smith in the 5X car. Terry Shepard was third, followed by Billy Boat, Bill Dodd, and Rick. Well, it's Saturday, February the 9th here at East Bay Speedway. This was originally the final big night for this year's Winter Nationals at 9th Annual. However, due to the rain on Wednesday, everything was moved back a day. So tonight it's a preliminary night. The drivers are running for additional points, which will help them for the lineup for the big show coming up tomorrow night. And what a good race we had last night with uh, with double features running that rained out show from uh, Thursday night. And Doug Wolfgang and Bobby Davis Jr. picked up wins driving the Gambler chassis. We're going down through the pits now see if we can talk to a couple of the drivers that are on hand tonight. We'll be again covering the time trials, the heat races, and the big 25 lap feature event tonight. All leading up to the big $6,000 win finale on now Sunday night. Bobby Davis Jr. Bobby won the feature race last night. Bobby got a new team uh, this year. Why don't you tell us about your new car owner and your new team? Okay, it's uh, Quentin Bammer. He's from Oakland, California. Uh, owns a body shop, Motor Brothers. Um, we're still with Gamma Competition, and them two just teamed up together, and we're doing about basically the same thing we had with Gil Suter last year. I uh, heard a rumor that there's a possibility you might run a few more All-Star shows this year. Seems that the Gambler Chassis Company has yet to win an All-Star championship, and that's the only one they haven't won with USAC and URC and World of Outlaws being pretty well dominated by the uh, Gambler Chassis. However, last year, the All-Stars and all previous years has been a Gambler Chassis win that one yet. I know CK would like to have that. Is there any truth to that rumor? Well, no, we, we don't really run that many All-Star races. You know, we stay on uh, World Outlaw circuit. 
to win the all-star circuit, you know, you have to run just about every race to stay in the top ten or to win. And uh, maybe somebody in the gambling car will win it for him, you know. Uh, we're trying to win a World Outlaws for him, so uh, that's where we're going to stay. Well, you looked real good here last night, East Bay Speedway, uh, two features in a row. Uh, was that a little bit too much race for this track, or can it, can it handle two features, no problem? Well, last night it was pretty nice. You know, it, it handled two racetrack, two features, and it uh, looks like it might tonight. But the first night we got here, the racetrack was real bad. Um, but you set a new track record. Yeah, well, we got to go out pretty early. The guys that went out late, you know, they was pretty slow. So uh, we got going pretty good, and then the rain come, and but tonight it looks like a fairly decent racetrack. New track record again, maybe. Yeah, we hope so, but we draw a bad number again tonight. Bobby, how old are you now? 21. When did you start racing? Uh, I was uh, 17. What do you think about a 13-year-old competitor or a 14-year-old competitor running wheel to wheel with you? Is that uh, a little young? Well, I don't know. Uh, it might be a little young, you know, but... If he starts now and stays out of trouble and everything, he'll be he'll be darn good. He'll be beating you someday, huh? Yeah, he'll, he'll be tough if he hangs in there. Keep your eye on the 18 gambler car, Bobby Davis Jr., a tough competitor here at East Bay Raceway. Now talking with uh, a young driver named Jeff Gordon out of Vallejo, California. Jeff, you sure got a lot of people talking down here in Florida this year, being the youngest sprint car driver, and they keep saying you're the youngest one in the world. I personally haven't seen anybody younger, so I guess you have that uh, that somewhat notable acclaim. Yeah, uh, I would say I am the youngest, you know, driver. Uh, Sport Allen, you know, I've uh, met him and everything. He look, he's a pretty good driver, you know. Um, I've been doing pretty good, you know, for my very first time, but uh, hopefully, you know, every time I go out, I'll be doing better and better and better. Well, I know you've got some back background racing go-karts and quarter midgets. I'm sure a sprint car is a lot different than, than a quarter midget. Uh, yeah, that's for sure, because this has so much power, you know. I mean, and it's real sideways, you know. you got to keep checking her and everything. And, I mean, it just flies down straight away. What about your uh, your arm strength? You got enough muscles up there to handle a sprint car? Yeah, I think so. It's really not that hard. You got power steering? Oh, uh, yeah. What about the idea of running with guys out there that's uh, old enough to be your grandpa? Is that uh, sort of rough on a young driver, thinking about all the, you know, the wolf gangs and, and the veteran drivers that are really experienced? No, I really don't think about it too much, you know. I just go out there and, you know, like, race like they're, you know, just one of me, you know. Well, let me ask you this. If, uh, if you're thinking about making a career out of sprint car driving, what's a young boy like you do for, for entertainment, for a hobby? Well, um... Too much, you know, um, skateboard, just a few things like that. Every once in a while, I race quarter midgets, you know. Is there anything you're afraid of? Um, when some, when some of the other guys, you know, get real close to you, it gets kind of scary. Or, you know, if you look like you're heading for the wall, that gets pretty scary too. What's the older drivers? If you talk to any of them, what do they think about racing with a youngster like you? Um, you know, I don't think they really think much about it. You know, they know I'm young and everything, but I think they think I have the ability to do it. Well, that's what it takes, Jeff. Good luck to you, and I'm sure that if you continue in racing and getting this head start on the other 13-year-olds that might someday be race drivers, you could uh, someday be another AJ for it. How about that? All right. Thanks a lot. Jeff Gordon time trials they're still changing that engine he has not got it ready yet so blaney is out of this race nine cars pick up the green flag and ronnie smith in the 5x car moves into the lead down the back stretch though in the 31 car it's jack hewitt moving up fast on your race leader ronnie smith in the 81 car running third it's billy boat out of phoenix arizona as these three drivers are running very close here at East Bay Speedway for the fourth heat race of the evening. It's Robbie Smith. Now Jack Hewitt trying Smith on the inside. Billy Boat still in contention and Roland Johnson in fourth position. Hewitt goes low in turn two, moves into the lead down the backstretch. Your new race leader is Jack Hewitt in the Nickel Brothers Gambler. It's Robbie Smith running second, Billy Boat running third. Roland Johnson still in fourth position, and young Jeff Gordon doing a good job back in the back there has moved up into fifth position. Let's watch Jeff Gordon make the lap around this track. 
is a smooth, steady driver, staying out of trouble, trying to pick up some experience here at East Bay, running with the All-Star Circuit of Champions. Hewitt blows a cloud of smoke as he picks up the checkered flag, followed by Billy Boat, Ronnie Smith, Roland Johnson, Jeff Gordon finished fifth, and Denny Donaldson was sixth. And here's the lineup for the C main event. On the pole, Rick Unger in the number 7 C car, sitting alongside of Robbie Smith in the 6 car. On the inside of the second row, it's Frank Filsko in the 27 F car, alongside of Red Koonspeck in the 66 car. Then it's Rick Standridge in the 10 car, followed by Jeff Gordon, the 16, Johnny Johnson in the 72 car, Jim Molise in the 30 car, and Stan Butler. There's the green flag, the race is underway, and Rick Unger is out in front setting the pace. Robbie Smith running second, down the back stretch. F Frank Filsko is in third position, and Jeff Gordon is moving up very quickly in the fourth position. It's Rick Unger, your leader, and now three cars running for second position. Young Jeff Gordon mixed right into the action there. Frank Filsko moves into second, followed by Robbie Smith, and Jeff Gordon running fourth. It's Filsko in second position trying to chase down Rick Unger in that 7C car out in front. Running third now, Jeff Gordon in the 16X car. Jeff doing a great job tonight. They finally said, okay, Jeff, you can run with him. He's been starting scratch all evening, all week, but tonight they let him go up into his position, and young 13-year-old Jeff Gordon is proving that he has the capabilities to drive a powerful sprint car. Rick Unger has dropped out. Unger lost another engine. He's pulled along the sidelines. He's out of the race, and the leader now is Frank Filsko, followed by young Jeff Gordon in the 16X car. Gordon putting the pressure on Frank Filsko as he moves in right on his bumper with just a few laps remaining in the C main event. It's still Filsko picking up the white flag. Jeff Gordon running a very close second. A little oil trading out the left bank of that engine. But Jeff Gordon doing a great job tonight here at East Bay for the C main. Qualifying into the next big race, the B main event. They come down now for the checkered flag, the 27F car, driven by Frank Filsko, picks up the flag. In second was Jeff Gordon, followed by Rick Standridge, Stan Butler, Taylor Andrews, Robbie Smith, and Johnny Johnson. There's a rundown of the scene main. A good hand for Frank Filsko and a special hand for Jeff Gordon. Alongside of Hank Lauer in the 37 car. Then we have Randy Kinzer, 56, Bob Hop, 88, Jim Haynes, number 20, Ron Smith, 5X, Ed Lynch Jr., number 2, Billy Boat, 81, Rodney Ritter, number 19, Tom Mark, 7M, Donnie Kreitz Jr. in the 69N, Harry Garrett in the 92 car, Terry Shepard in the 7S car, Rocky Hodges up for Denny Donaldson in the 7D car, then Frank Filsko in the 27, Jeff Gordon in the 16X, Rick Standridge in the 10 car, Stan Butler in the 52 car, Taylor Andrews in the 88 car, Robbie Smith in the 6 car, Johnny Johnson in the 72 car and Rick Unger in the 7C car. There's your lineup for the B main event and the top six cars will be qualifying into the A. A very important race for a transfer tonight for these drivers to move up into that A and A event where all the big bucks is going to be paid including the $6,000 prize. Sitting on the pole now is Daryl Dodd in the 11 car alongside of Hank Lauer the side champ in the 37 car. These two drivers are both seasoned veterans in the sprint cars Randy Kinzer in the 56XS car is in the second row, alongside of Bob Hopp in the 88 car. Harry D is giving them the signal that next time around, the green flag will wave. 22 cars for 20 laps. Daryl Dodd sets the pace. He picks up the tempo going through turn three. The green flag's out. The race is underway. It's Daryl Dodd, followed by Hank Lauer in a 37 car. And Daryl Dodge, leader down the straightaway. We've got a tangle down in turn one. Looks like several cars involved in this melee down in turn number one. Ed Lynch Jr.'s cars turn sideways on the track. And the two car, the 27F car of Frankie Filsko. And while that was happening, there was a car rolled over on the other end of the track. And that is the 5X car 
That car being driven by Ron Smith. Ronnie Smith in the 5X upside down in turn four. And we've got Rodney Ritter upside down in the 19 car in turn number one. Alongside of Ritter is Frankie Felsko, Ed Lynch Jr., Tom Marks is in the car there in the, in the tangle. They rolled the 19 car back over. He's okay. In fact, it looks like they're going to start the 19 car. Ritter is going to restart the race. Must have been an easy roll. The green's back out. Now the race is underway. And Daryl Dodd is your race leader in the 11 car. Rodney Ritter in that 19 car up from the back, moving up very fast. And that little upside down tumble didn't seem to affect the way the Ritter car is handling tonight here at East Bay Speedway for the B main event. It's still Daryl Dodd out in front in the 11 car, setting the pace. Randy Kinzer moved into second position in that 56 Jerry Shield Sprinter. And Kinzer is starting to put the move on the leader. In third, it's the 37 car of Hank Lauer. Randy Kinzer and Lauer running side by side. In the 16 car, it's Jeff Gordon. He's back in the back, kind of staying out of trouble. Rodney Ritter moving up very fast in the 19 car as Ritter is now starting to put the pressure on the front runners. Randy Kinzer and Daryl Dodd putting a show on at the front of the pack. There's another car that got upside down during that early melee. Ron Smith, he's back out there racing again as your race leader, Daryl Dodd, now being pressured by Randy Kinzer, the 37 car of Hank Lauer running third. This 20-lap event now winding down towards the tail end. Randy Kinzer trying to make a move into the lead and pick up some extra cash here as well as a transfer spot into the feature event. There's eight laps remaining in this B main event. Now Kinzer moves alongside of Daryl Dodd down the straightaway. It's side by side through turns one and two. Down the back stretch, it's still Daryl Dodd by a wheel as Randy Kinzer makes his move high on the outside in turn three. Kinzer is moving into the lead down the straightaway and takes over that position from Daryl Dodd in the 11 car. Your new race leader, Randy Kinzer from Bloomington, Indiana. Daryl Dodd running in second position. Rodney Ritter been moving up very well from the back now. Ritter has moved around Bob Hop in the 88 car and is now running in fifth position. Your leader is Randy Kinzer, followed by Daryl Dodd. Hank Lauer running third. Rodney Ritter is now in fourth position. If Daryl Dodd, though, and Randy Kinzer putting on a wheel-to-wheel side-by-side race for this B-main event, Hank Lauer running in third, moving up very well. Rodney Ritter in fourth position. The race is nearing close now, and it's still a back-and-forth battle between the 56 car of Randy Kinzer and Daryl Dodds in the 11 car. There's the white flag indicating one lap to go. Kinzer picks it up. Moves into the lead. Through turns one and two down the back stretch. It's Randy Kinzer, your leader. Daryl Dodd running second. Rodney Ritter has moved around Hank Lauer and is trying to come into third position. There's the checkered flag. The winner was Randy Kinzer. Finishing second was Daryl Dodd, followed by Rodney Ritter. Hank Lauer in the 37 car was fourth. Bob Hopp in the 88 car was fifth, followed by Jim Haynes, Donnie Kreitz Jr., Terry Shepard, Billy Boat, Tom Marks, Ed Lynch Jr., Harry Garrett, Rick Standridge, and Taylor Andrews. We understand that the uh, Jeff Gordon car, Jeff got a clod in the face, knocked his uh, mud eater face shield off, and kind of dropped to the sidelines, finishing in 17th position. There's Lonnie along with Bobby Davis and the flagman Harry D. And let's talk to the winner, Bobby Davis Jr. Another quick rundown, Bobby Davis followed by Kelly Kinzer, Rick Ferkel, Rodney Ritter, Jerry Stone, Frankie Kerr, Robert Smith, Randy Smith, Jack Hoddenshield, Daryl Dodd, Randy Kinzer, Hank Lauer, Tony Wyatt, Jim Haynes, and Fred Linder. It's always a lot of skill involved in winning a race, but there's also the element of luck. And, uh, well, I guess you kind of got lucky tonight with Doug dropping out there. Yeah, I, I guess you could say that. You know, uh, like I always say, I'd rather be lucky than good any day. Uh, Doug was running good, though. 
we well, was dicing it out back and forth there, and uh, I really don't know what happened to him. But, uh, you know, I felt good, and he I'm sure he felt good, so uh, we come up winning. Could you have caught him, though, without uh, his problem? I don't know. He was going real decent. Like I said, once he got out in the flat, he kind of had us. But uh, if we kept him in traffic, uh, I felt like I might have cut or got him. But um, as it was going, it looked like it was his race pretty much. You must like this track. It's been very good to you. Yeah, we. this is the first time I've had good luck here. And uh, every other time I've been pretty fast and just terrible luck and glad to win at this time. Well, I've ran uh, quarter midgets for about eight or nine years, and I've ran go-karts for about three or four years. And the go-karts, they really help you out on the dirt because, you know, you're sideways and on the pedal, you know, just sort of like the sprint. I'm trying to win the Indy 500. I'd like to 